We're keeping it real for all the moms out there. With Mother's Day coming up this weekend, it seemed like the perfect time to have a conversation with our dear friend, Sarah Nicole Landry, who you know as the face behind the bird's papaya. And we're going to talk about her pandemic pregnancy and choosing an at-home birth. Yes, she did. Now, if you follow Sarah, you know she's always honest uh, about the good moments and the bad moments and the messy ones in between. And with this topic, I can imagine there were all of those moments. Right, Sarah? Uh, yes, absolutely. I think you just described the entire year for me as a whole, emotionally, physically. It was very messy. <laughs> I can just imagine. So even when the world wasn't upside down, any mom will tell you, if you're lucky enough to have the support of family and or your partner, it is very rewarding and it is so needed when you have mm -hmm. a baby. So how did that change for you over the last year? Well, I found it really surprising, actually. You you read all these books, you find all these resources online, and everything is directing towards having support, bringing your partner or a support person to appointments, involving others, making sure you, you know, get that village together for you for this momentous time in your life, and also trauma to your body. And what was so hard was that there wasn't any guidebook to doing it in a pandemic when you had to start doing virtual appointments, when you lost having as many opportunities to have your partner there. My husband actually wasn't able to come to any um, of the clinical ultrasounds or anything like that before the birth. So it was a very detached experience and it caused us to feel and then immediately into postpartum really having to be locked down at home. I mean, there wasn't like, okay, get out and go for a walk at the mall or try and get together with friends, all of these different things that we're told to do. We lost a lot of that. Yeah, and I know even not having a new baby, going outside with the kids, it's like you feel all shady. You're looking around, like, is anyone yeah. close? Like, you, you need to keep your distance. Everybody's on guard. It's not a nice feeling. So you don't have the support. You can't feel like you can leave easily. And that's got to really make it more tough to have this transition um, into having a new baby. So your mm. most recent birth was at home. I want you to tell yes. us about that. Now, is it true that you had four birth plans? I absolutely had four birth plans. And I, I've had three kids before. My youngest is 10, though. So it's been a good decade since I've done this. And I remember giving birth before. It was just something I was really scared of, grossed out by. It was just like anything I could do to kind of lean away from the experience and be afraid of that pain. So this time... I don't know why, but I just became, I saw somebody have a home birth and it just looked differently than anything I'd ever experienced. And I wanted to try, but I honest, honest to goodness, I didn't think I could do it. I didn't think it, I had it in me. I was just so scared. There was just so much to, you know, consider, but I found myself leaning into what I never thought I could do. This um, calm at home birth. It was my first time even trying to do it unmedicated. And uh, a lot of that was because of the pandemic. There was just a lot up in the air at the time. And I wanted to be with my family it was my number one priority. I wanted my you know kids in the home and it was, an unreal experience and I wish more people talked about it. Okay, so set the scene for me here. Are the kids, are they hanging out as you're going through the contractions? Um, at some point were you like, all y'all got to get out the house right now because I don't want to see your faces? <laughs> or was it just like, you know, these beautiful moments? Because I, I can see that being really beautiful, having everyone there around you as you have this new human come into the world. What was it like? Yeah, so we actually had them with my mom in the basement for the most part. Mm -hmm. And they were able, because of the amount of distance that we had in our space, they were able to come up and witness the actual birth. I birthed in a tub, and so the wall were quite high. They didn't have to see anything graphic. They could just kind of see her come through the water, breaking through the water in that moment. Wow. And they ended up afterwards, the midwives even gave the kids like a placenta tour, showed how everything was working. And it was such a family experience. Now, the moment that I will hold on to forever was when the midwife brought me upstairs and tucked me into bed. And my husband brought up the baby and all the kids just oh. kind of gathered in the room. We sat on the bed and I thought, this is the first time I think I can look at birth and have a positive memory of it yeah. and feel like it was such a peaceful experience, not like this traumatic, chaotic, scary one. It was really, really beautiful, and I'm very grateful for it. 
That is gorgeous. I had a midwife for my first, midwives, and the, it was mm. the post part of care that blew my mind, especially oh, at a time like this. So they came to my house. They ch they put the baby on the boob. They, you know, mm -hmm. like I was in my home and it's like when you're having yeah. a baby, you're not sick. You're creating a life. Yeah. So I think that's mm -hmm. there's something so beautiful about that. Now, uh, you've always been an open book, Sarah, and your social media, your blog, you put it all out there and, and you're really honest. So can you share with us your experience of prenatal depression? Well, first of all, I didn't know that that existed. I right. didn't realize that that was a thing. I'd heard so much about postpartum depression or, you know, postpartum anxiety, but I had it hit early on. And a lot of that I think was due to the pandemic. A lot of the fears that I had, I almost felt like I was so scared to feel bonded to the baby because I was so scared of losing the baby mm -hmm. that it created this massive wall of detachment. It almost, to, somebody described it to me almost as if you're trying to fall in love with your liver and you're like, well, I don't like what? It just felt like it was in my body and a part of my body, but I was so sick. I couldn't break that barrier. And I didn't, I felt so much guilt for that. Nobody ever talks about what do you do when you have this pregnancy that you wanted and that you're excited for, but you're slipping into depression? And I'd never dealt with depression before. I'd had anxiety before, but nothing like this. So I ended up going for really amazing therapy. We're seeing perinatal depression and anxiety on the rise massively. So while it was something I didn't even know existed, I'm so grateful I had the opportunity to talk about it because I found out very quickly that I was not alone. I appreciate you saying that here. Uh, more of us need to be talking about this because you didn't know, and now someone who didn't know this exists is going to be watching this interview and following you and saying, oh, okay, it's normal. I've lost a lot or I'm feeling detached. Let me just go get some help. Sarah, thank you so much for always mm -hmm. keeping it